Are you a healthcare professional that needs to practice your English medical vocabulary so that you can be more confident when presenting at conferences? Well, this video is for you. In today's video, you'll be practicing your COVID medical terminology in a conference scenario. The lesson today will be a presentation by a medical scientist on their latest COVID research. If you're new here, my name is Dr. HS. I have a PhD in medicine. I'm an Australian scientist. I'm a certified translator. And I also have this YouTube channel to help medical professionals improve their English, their medical English. If that sounds interesting, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, comment, make questions so that I can continue to make these videos for you. So let's get started. So today's lesson will be split into four sections. Keywords, scenario, imitation, and surprise tips. If you already know how the lesson goes, skip to the time above so that you can learn the keywords already. If this is your first time, I'm going to give a quick explanation of what's going to happen. Step one, I'll teach you some keywords. You'll repeat them after me and repeat them out loud. Do this as many times as you need to until these words flow naturally. Step two, it's the scenario. Just observe watch and listen. Step three, imitation. So the scenario is going to play again, but now after each sentence, there will be a pause and you will repeat, you will imitate the character. Step four, just some more tips on how to improve your medical English. If you need to add subtitles, you can do this by clicking on CC and then choose the language and settings. The keywords of today are COVID, COVID, Okay, but there has been a COVID exposure here at the school. But there has been a COVID exposure here at the school. Cytokine. 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 Lymphocytes. 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 HIV binds to which receptor on the host lymphocyte? HIV binds to which receptor on the host lymphocyte? CD4 positive T cells. CD4 positive T cells. Your CD4 count has risen. Initial findings suggested increased CD4 counts. Your CD4 count from 40 to 200. If the lesson is too difficult or too fast, you can change the speed of the video. You can do this by clicking on the settings and then choose how fast you want the video to go. Thank you all for being here today. I will be presenting COVID-19 the pandemic. COVID-19 became a pandemic affecting more than 123 million people worldwide with more than 2.7 million deaths by March 2021. Caused by the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 resembles influenza, with a clinical picture ranging from mild upper airway symptoms in the majority of cases, to severe lower airway symptoms in a subgroup of patients, in which acute respiratory distress syndrome develops.
and may rapidly progress to respiratory failure, due to intense acute lung injury, which is its major cause of death. It is also known that this subgroup of patients has cytokine storm syndrome, which seems to be responsible for multi-organ failure. In addition, COVID-19 patients develop signs and symptoms. Similar to those observed in sepsis, many of which result in microthrombosis, organ dysfunction, and eventually shock. The first step in SARS-CoV-2 infection is the molecular interaction between virus membrane glycoprotein spike S and the angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 ACE2, which is expressed in the several host cells, including lung pneumocytes, epithelial cells, and endothelial cells. Our laboratory, aimed to evaluate the correlation between immune characteristics, especially levels, of lymphocytes and cytokines in peripheral blood, and clinical parameters in severe and critical COVID-19 patients, in order to find indicators of disease progression. 50 adult cases with severe and critical COVID-19 were enrolled. The disease outcome and immune patterns were analyzed. We found that the lymphocyte cell numbers in these patients was decreased compared to that in healthy donors, including total lymphocytes, total T cells, CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, B cells and NK cells. Furthermore, the cytokine levels, including interleukin 2, 4, 6, 10, TNF alpha, and interferon gamma, were remarkably increased. In addition, the levels of interleukin-6 and 10 in critical COVID-19 patients were significantly higher than that in severe COVID-19 patients. To further evaluate the correlation between these immune parameters and clinical prognosis, we analyzed the overall survival in patients with high and low levels of lymphocyte subpopulations and cytokines. We found that patients with high levels of total lymphocytes, total T cells, CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, and NK cells had a good survival. In this study, severe and critical COVID-19 patients exhibited lymphopenia, high level of cytokines, with increased interleukin-6 or 10, which can potentially be used as biomarkers for disease progression. I would like to thank my PhD students and postdocs that performed all the experiments. I would also like to thank all the sources of funding. I will be taking questions now. Thank you all for being here today. I will be presenting COVID-19 the pandemic. COVID-19 became a pandemic, affecting more than 123 million people worldwide. With more than 2.7 million deaths by March 2021. Caused by the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 resembles influenza. with a clinical picture ranging from mild upper airway symptoms in the majority of cases. To severe lower airway symptoms in a subgroup of patients. In which acute respiratory distress syndrome develops.
and may rapidly progress to respiratory failure, due to intense acute lung injury. Which is its major cause of death? It is also known that this subgroup of patients has cytokine storm syndrome. Which seems to be responsible for multi-organ failure. In addition, COVID-19 patients develop signs and symptoms. Similar to those observed in sepsis, many of which result in microthrombosis, organ dysfunction, and eventually shock. The first step in SARS-CoV-2 infection is the molecular interaction. Between virus membrane glycoprotein spike S and the angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 ACE2. Which is expressed in the several host cells. Including lung pneumocytes, epithelial cells, and endothelial cells. Our laboratory, aim to evaluate the correlation. Between immune characteristics Especially levels, of lymphocytes and cytokines in peripheral blood. and clinical parameters in severe and critical COVID-19 patients. In order to find indicators of disease progression. Fifty adult cases with severe and critical COVID-19 were enrolled. The disease outcome and immune patterns were analyzed. We found that the lymphocyte cell numbers in these patients was decreased compared to that in healthy donors including total lymphocytes, total T cells, CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, B cells and NK cells. Furthermore, the cytokine levels
including interleukin-2, 4, 6, 10, TNF-alpha, and interferon gamma, were remarkably increased. In addition, the levels of interleukin-6 and 10 in critical COVID-19 patients were significantly higher than that in severe COVID-19 patients. To further evaluate the correlation. Between these immune parameters and clinical prognosis. We analyzed the overall survival in patients with high and low levels of lymphocyte subpopulations and cytokines. We found that patients with high levels of total lymphocytes total T cells, CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, and NK cells had a good survival. In this study, severe and critical COVID-19 patients exhibited lymphopenia. High level of cytokines with increased interleukin-6 or 10. which can potentially be used as biomarkers for disease progression. I would like to thank my PhD students and postdocs that performed all the experiments. I would also like to thank all the sources of funding. I will be taking questions now. In today's video, you learned how to present data at a medical conference. So I have a question for you. Where do you look for the latest research developments? So I look for them usually on PubMed, which is also known as NCBI, but you can also find them on Google Scholar and ResearchGate. I recommend that you read at least one paper a month. That way, you're up to date on the latest research developments and you don't depend on news outlets. And second, this will actually help your medical terminology. So I hope you liked the lesson today. If you have any questions, write them below. See you soon.